Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. made a huge callback to the Howling Commandos, filled in a lot of Garrett and Ward's backstories, and made a lot of foreshadowing references to people releasing inner things inside of them, like secret powers. So I think we could get some full-on superhero action in the finale. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Marvel and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. videos every week. As soon as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes off the air though, I'm gonna be replacing those videos with Star Wars videos. So be sure to subscribe to get everything and leave me suggestions for bonus videos. So let's talk about some Howling Commandos and flashbacks. Here are my top five moments. Careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. But number five, Garrett recruits Ward for Hydra. We finally found out how Garrett rescued Ward from a bad situation. I actually thought he killed his brother in that house fire, but more importantly, I think that he convincingly lied about trying to kill his brother. I don't know why S.H.I.E.L.D. agents would have to break into Juvie like they were breaking him out of prison or something. Maybe Garrett was just too lazy to do all the necessary paperwork, so now nah, we'll just break him out. The funniest part was when Garrett dumped him in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, and told him to survive. It reminded me of when How I Met Your Mother showed Robin Sherbatsky's Sweet 16 flashback. She's played by Kobe Smulders, aka Maria Hill. She got dropped out of a helicopter and was forced to fight off packs of rabid wolves and horny miners. So does that imply in a meta way that Maria Hill is a much bigger badass than Ward? Yes, I kind of think it does. We did see his dog in the crosshairs at the end too. I think they just wanted to leave the possibility of Ward getting a redemption arc, and if they had shown him straight up killing the dog, it would have been a much harder sell after the finale. And when you really think about it, he didn't kill Fitz and Simmons, he just dropped them in a glass container out of a giant aircraft, you know, Loki style from Avengers. If only they had Thor's hammer to break their way out too. Number 4, Howling Commando Antiques Roadshow. This was definitely the most fun scene, aside from maybe them trying to break into cybertech with the false identities and costumes. In case you forgot though, Triplet's grandfather was a Howling Commando and technically, you know, so is Nick Fury, but they're playing it fast and loose with the timelines. I'm thinking Nick Fury was probably one during the 60s and 70s. I don't think that he fought with Triplet's grandfather. So here's the list of special items that I heard Coulson geeking out over. A handheld hypno beam, a transistorized blaster gun, the Joy Buzzer EMP, and the grappling gun that they used to zip line onto the train in the first Captain America movie. They actually used that in the episode. Just based on that one item, I would bet that Triplet's grandfather was a Howling Commando around the same time Captain America was going on, you know, like post-World War II. Don't be surprised though if we get a lot more references to Coulson's love of memorabilia in the future. I could totally see Coulson playing with his toys, you know, like in Spaceballs when no one's looking. It'd be so hilarious, just pew 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 pew. But that's actually one of the big flashbacks that we have not gotten yet that I really want to see. Like Coulson flashing back to whenever Nick Fury took him under his wing. Number 3. Garrett was the first Deathlock. In case you didn't know, the comic book version of the character is a cyborg. Not a Deathlock cyborg like on the show, but we did get a peek at Garrett's metal plating last week. He's basically on the edge of death, you know, just because his body is so far gone whenever he started the program. This was basically the big plan reveal, and Coulson did kind of figure it out with his chart porn, but Garrett was the one that explained it explicitly. You know, he needs the serum to live. He's only got one to two months. I was really happy when they gave us that flashback to Garrett talking about how he joined Hydra. You know, S.H.I.E.L.D. basically took a dump on him, and so he's just out for revenge. I keep watching Reyna more and more closely too, because as she learns what Garrett is really after, she and Ward start to distance themselves just a little bit from him, at least in an emotional sense. I really do sense a reckoning coming, if it weren't plainly obvious already that Coulson is always going to win in the end. I mean, he survived death, so how could he not beat Garrett? Number 2, Reyna and May foreshadow transformations and releasing inner power. This is all about Skye. Everyone is wondering WTF is up with her DNA. Reyna is coming at it from a metahuman perspective, you know, all that talk about what's on the inside revealing itself is just a clear indicator that Skye and Reyna are going to either morph into aliens or superhumans during the finale. Something is going to happen. Someone will go through a physical transformation. Because Skye is 100% alien and looks human, there are only a couple possibilities that I think she could be. Either she's a straight up frost giant runt, just like Loki was, you know, a la monsters Reyna mentioned, or she's Kree, or she's a scroll or super scroll. They're the ones that change form. Either way, both her parents were aliens, so she isn't half anything. She is 100% Kree, Super Scroll, or Frost Giant. I do feel like Super Scroll is the best explanation given all the data that we know right now. So let's go with that. Your friendly neighborhood scroll. And my number one WTF moment, Garrett takes the serum. Glowy skin equals not good for Team Coulson. 
We saw him punch Coulson across the room in the teaser for the next episode, so I'm guessing that he's healed and super strong, and probably super crazy. I did expect him to manifest some sort of physical deformity, but the minute Reyna produced that vial, I knew there was no way Garrett was not going to take it himself. There was only one of them left, and all that he really cares about is himself, so why wouldn't he take it? And, big question, why would Reyna give it to him if she knew that? The answer is, is because she's curious, and she wants to see what comes out from the inside. You know, just like with Skye, she kept looking at her own hand like she was also hiding something special. Like she's either metahuman, or she's an alien, or scroll in disguise, or something's going on with her. So what I'm expecting to happen in the finale is that they will show us what Skye is. Like, she will go through a physical transformation, but they'll leave the explanation of what that is and her heritage for season 2. It feels a lot like a Willow Buffy thing where she developed her witch powers over the course of a few seasons, you know, not all at once. But now it's your turn, let me know in the comments below what was your biggest WTF moment and do you think that Ward killed that dog? We did not hear a gun go off, I don't think he killed him. Overall this episode was totally back up to A- status. I love Murray Hill last week but this episode really went a long way to deepening the sky blue alien plot and right now that's really the only plot I care about. I totally expect Brett Dalton to be on the show in Season 2, and even if everyone hates him, he'll totally be back on Team Coulson. So that's going on in the background. Bill Paxton, on the other side of the fence, has been a lot of fun to watch at times, but I feel like for him, this episode was just purgatory, before he gets to be that full-on supervillain in the finale. You know, he was amazing as a dirtbag shield agent, and then as an asshole Hydra agent, but in this episode, it was mostly him hobbling around being taken out by Joy Buzzer EMPs. He was literally a flesh bag of fail until he took that serum. I really do hate it when characters are in limbo. You know, either be a man or be a superman. Don't sit on the fence. It's just super boring. Based on all that blue alien, May bottled rage, Ward and Reyna turncoat foreshadowing, I feel like the final battle will pretty much be all of the main characters versus Garrett. Deathlock too, but they do have to fix that detonator issue in his brain before he can help out. Remember, Samuel L. Jackson is back too, so he is definitely going to kick some ass. There's no time I ever see him on screen where I don't think he won't be kicking ass. I know a lot of you too have been asking me about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being renewed for Season 2. It hasn't officially been renewed, but essentially it kind of is. What they're doing is waiting to announce Season 2 to time it with their announcement for the Agent Carter TV show, and that's pretty much a go. So they're going to announce both those shows at the same time, because they're both going to be ABC shows. Right now in Hollywood, all the studios are announcing which shows are getting renewed and which pilots are going to series. For instance, the Flash TV show at the CW, it's pretty much guaranteed, but we'll also know about that officially in the next week or so. So, if there's anything big from the episode that you thought I left out of the video, just write it below in the comments, and let me know, what do you think that Sky is? Remember, whatever that is, it has to be 100% alien. Hint, hint, super scroll. And remember, next week is the finale, so be sure to subscribe to get my video, and as soon as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes away, I'm just replacing all of my S.H.I.E.L.D. videos with Star Wars videos, so leave me suggestions for what you want those to be about. Right now, click here to get my breakdown of the Gotham trailer. It's going to be the Batman prequel show, and click here to get last week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. High fives.